Hello friends, welcome to our video lecture series. This is the second class wherein we will be discussing about the accounting as a measurement and valuation system. We have seen in our earlier class that without measurement and valuation, things may not be in a position to be recorded or the economic transactions and events which happen in the organization may not be recorded properly. So let's see how accounting as a system would be of use or how this system measures and values the various transactions. We need to understand these two things, postulates and practices. Postulates are nothing but the assumptions that we need to make whenever we are doing the functions of an accounting or bookkeeping. Whenever we are recording, we need to know that there are certain assumptions which needs to be followed, which need not be disclosed separately, but they are there in the accounting system. Say for example, if I talk about any company which is registered in India, if I talk about Indian company, then there is an assumption that these financial statements would be prepared in terms of Indian rupees. Similarly, if any company which is registered in say US, it would be uh, the financial numbers would be in terms of US dollars. So these are certain postulates or assumptions which need not be mentioned, but they do exist in the accounting world, right? The basic, basic objective of the financial accounting is to determine the income. Why? Because a business is nothing but an activity which is being performed to earn profit. The main motive is to earn profit. So the basic objective of any financial accounting would be to find out the profit out of the various transactions that have happened during the particular period. Again, accounting is oriented towards the entity or a business unity concept, unit concept. What does this mean? This means that the accountant needs to keep this thing in mind that the business is not the same as the owners. Say for example, I start up a business named A Limited. I put in some money into my business. A Limited. This is me, A. I am Mr. A. I've invested some money in A Limited. Now the accountant, what is he supposed to do? He is supposed to record the transactions of A Limited. He has nothing to do with Mr. A or at the most what he would do, whatever amount has been invested by A in A limited, he would be treating it as a liability or capital, which is to be repaid back to Mr. A. For him, for the accountant, this is a separate unit and this is a separate unit. What he does is he makes the accounts for this unit, namely A limited. Right? So accounting uh, talks about the entity concept or business entity concept which says that the business and its owners are two different entities. This needs to be kept in mind. Then we know that good accounting practice, practice cannot be based on the trial and error methods. Right? Why? Because the cost involved in accounting would be very high. If we are following the trial and error approach and what happens if something goes wrong, then the cost of reverting back would be high. So for a good accounting practice, you need to have a series of concepts, principles and standards. So the accounting system prescribes a series of concepts. Concept means the basic ideas. Standards means the basic rules. Postulates means the uh, Various assumptions and principles means the rules which are made by the organization to be applied by themselves. So accounting is a series of accounting system is a series of concepts, standards, postulates and principles. Right. So accounting theory as a doctrine in, is explanatory in nature and the underlying reasons and justifications are related to the practice of that. Why we do that? 
these are all related to the practices which have evolved over a period of time the rules which are applicable today in the accounting world may not be the same as they were 100 years back right so first thing that we need to understand in accounting as a measurement and valuation system is that we need to understand what the accounting postulates are what the accounting practices are Looking at the definition of accounting, which is given by the American Association, uh, American Accounting Association, it says that it is the process of identifying. Let's break up this definition to have a better understanding of what accounting is all about. Accounting is the process of identifying. Identifying what? You have many transactions happening in a business. or events happening in the business. Many are economic and some are non-economic. Say for example, a person inquiring about a product, this is a non-economic transaction. A person buying a product is an economic transaction. Any transaction which involves money is called as an economic transaction whereas the transactions or events which do not involve money are called as non-economic transaction. The first thing that we need to do is we need to see whether the transaction is economical or not. The first thing is to identify it. Then we need to measure it. What is the value of that? Then we need to record these transactions and communicate the economic information or the results to whom to permitted informed judgments and decisions by the users of an information. It is an application of the general theory of information to the problem of efficient economic operation. So what accounting does is if we bifurcate this definition, we come to know that accounting is a process. Process of what? First identify the transactions. If they are economical, they will, uh, if they are economic transactions, they would find a place in our books of accounts. If they are not, they will not. Then we need to measure those economic transactions as to what is the value to be placed on them. And after recording this, summarizing this, you have some result. You get some result out of your business transactions. You need to communicate this dis, uh, results to the users of accounting information. It is an application of the theory of information for uh, which are related to the economic operations of a business, right? So accounting is nothing but identifying, measuring, recording, classifying, summarizing and communicating the economic transactions of a business. Then we need to understand what measurement is all about in accounting. What is measurement? Measurement is nothing but assignment of the numbers to the objects or events as we already seen in our last slide that there may be many events which happen in our organization some may be economical some may not be economical so if there is an economical activity which happens then the accountant has to measure that activity or event so that it can be uh, recorded in our books of accounts Measurement is the process of assigning numbers to represent the qualities. Say for example, what happens if we talk about the IPL? What happened in IPL? Different franchises, say Mumbai Indians. They have the data of different players. What they do is they have a particular some, some amount of fund which needs to be used for buying these players. What they do based upon these qualities of these players, their statistics, what they do is they buy those players. The franchisee do buy those players. So these qualities of these players would be converted into some uh, quantifiable number. And based upon that, they would be putting some value to those players and they would be buying it for their own franchisee. So similarly, in accounting also what happens, it is a process of assigning the numbers to represent the qualities of different transactions. In other words, 
accounting measures are measurements are based on the monetary valuations everything is to be converted or to be recorded in monetary terms why because this is uh, a common uh, denominator for all the transactions in order to have a uh, universality in the recordings after measurement we need to understand what valuation is how to put a value on something or how the valuation does uh, happen so for this you need to understand three important elements which are applicable in the valuation of accounting first the, the first element would be duality of values which means there has to be for a particular uh, economic transaction or for every economic transaction you need to have benefit and sacrifice aspect say for example if i say i need to buy a pen then i need to sacrifice rupee 50 for which i would be getting a benefit of a writing instrument similarly the seller of the same pen he also finds some value in this for him this would be the sacrifice he has to sacrifice his pen and for which he would be getting a benefit of 50 rupees so every this transaction would happen when there is duality of values it has some value for the buyer and it has some value the transaction has some value for the seller so the buyer needs to sacrifice something in order to get some benefit similarly the seller has to sacrifice something in order to get a benefit out of that item is this clear the first first element of valuation the second element would be transformation of values what does this mean the value of this pen for mr a or for me would be rupees 50 would be more than rupees 50 right the value would be more than 50 or the amount which is being paid by me i need to find out some value more than my money being paid similarly this uh, for the seller the value of rupee 50 is greater than the value of the pen for me or for the buyer the value of pen or the writing instrument is greater than rupees 50 for the seller the value of rupee 50 is greater than the value of pen which means there has to be an exchange of utility differential to the monetary differential the use of pen is more for me as compared to rupee 50 similarly the use of rupee 50 is more for the seller of that pen this is called as transformation of values if you have if you think a particular transaction is of more value then only you will be willing to enter into that transaction right the third element is causal networking among values what does this mean if you talk about economic activities or the uh, Uh, functioning of the business you find that there are many elements which are involved say for example for a businessman he needs to pay to the labor he needs to buy the raw material he needs to incur some expense for the conversion then he also incur some marketing expense there are various elements which are interrelated interlinked with each other what the businessman does is he pays money for this purpose and what he does whenever he sells it he gets money for the same purpose right so the valuation principle says that there is a interlink between various Uh, the entire network of the economic activities right so the valuation could trace values through the entire network of your transformations which forms the base of all the economic activity the economic activities do happen which means he is paying money on one hand for these things and then again he is collecting money 
when he sells these products right then we need to see value and objectivity in accounting what is objectivity objectivity means something which does not change something which does not change with the users of that with the users or with the persons involved when does this happen when you talk about the facts when the numbers are uh, assisted with some proofs so objectivity needs to be there which means the valuation should not be subjective or it should not be having a personal bias about the person who is doing the accounting work let's take an example for that say for example mr keshu bhai a cotton yarn manufacturer is buying a machine paying a cash of 27 lakh 70000 the question is at what value do you record this transaction before you uh, work on to this you need to understand that there are four different values valuation methods in accounting world so you need to choose amongst these four as to which which one would be used for your uh, recording purpose recording of transactions first is the historical cost historical cost means the cost that you have paid in other words it is the purchase price plus the transportation plus installation things like that this is one way of costing the other one is your current or replacement cost what does this mean it means if i need to buy the same type of machinery same type same life same capacity what would be its value today say for example if i have machine a if i need to replace this with machine b what would be the cost of this replacement right this is the replacement cost or current cost then you have net realizable value this is nothing but the sales value minus your cost of sales say for example if you are selling a machine a and you need you are selling this machine a for 25 lakh rupees and this you are uh, selling to a person who is in a different uh, state for which you need to incur an expense of say 1 lakh rupees what comes to your pocket is 24 lakhs so the amount that comes to your pocket after all the necessary expenses to make this sale effective is called as the net realizable value then you have present value this is also known as the discounting value discounted value you may agree that the rupee which is to be received by me 5 years from now may not have the same value today or the rupee today may not have the same value after 5 years why because of the inflation so the amount which is adjusted with the inflation rate is called as the discounted value or present value so there are different methods of valuation out of these methods historical cost concept is the only method which is objective in nature why because this is the amount which you have paid this does not change the amount which has been paid by you towards bringing that asset into your present condition and location this does not change whereas the replacement cost keeps on changing with time similarly the realization realizable value may change depending upon the uh, different locations of the buyer and seller similarly the present value may change depending upon the timing of receiving and paying the money so the historical cost concept is termed as the concept which is of more objective in nature as compared to the other 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 methods so in accounting we use the historical cost basis of valuation right then let us see the various forms of business entities various types of business entities 
every business entity every type of business entity have their own risks and their own freedoms say for example if we talk about sole proprietor which means one man army a person doing everything on his own the risk involved is very high at the same time the decision making is everything with him he need not consult any other person a partnership is two or more persons coming together to do business wherein they will be sharing their risks and rewards that is called as a partnership form of business entity company means a entity which is registered under the companies act which is a bigger uh, entity as compared to both these uh, other uh, kinds of entities mentioned here these are the traditional forms of business entities looking at the features of the uh, entities we find that the owner in case of sole proprietor is the same person in case of partners it is a group of persons which are more than two in case of shareholders they are many more as compared to the these other two activities owners or shareholders in this case there would be one owner in this case it is two and the maximum is according to the current scenario it is maximum is 50 in case of a company if it's a private company then minimum maximum numbers are this if it is a public company the maximum there is no limit for the maximum numbers talk about the law uh, sorry the uh, legality of that the owner and the business are treated as one and the same which means there is no separacy of legal entities when we record the books uh, when we record the transactions of a sole proprietor in other words the liability of the firm would be the liability of the uh, business owner similarly in case of partnership also there is not separate legal entity the partnership Uh, the a partners individually are called as partners and collectively they are called as partners partners uh, pa collectively they are called as a partnership firm in case of company uh, we have separate legal entity concept or the entity concept which says the uh, liability of the members would be restricted towards the amount paid by them or in other words the members are different from the company talking about the uh, governance of that you do not have any specific law for sole proprietors wherein for in case of partners you have indian partnership act and for companies you have the companies act the management and control in case of proprietorship is with the proprietor or the owner or the individual in case of partners it is the group of persons and in case of company it is with the board of directors who are elected by the shareholders liability in case of sole proprietors is unlimited and in case of partnership also it is unlimited whereas in case of company it is limited to the extent of share capital paid by them legal registration is not required in case of sole proprietor whereas in case of partnership if you wish you can register if you don't you need not register yourself as a partnership firm but in case of company you need to compulsorily register yourself as a company under the companies act flexibility is maximum in case of sole proprietors whereas in case of partners it depends upon the agreement between the partners whereas in com in case of companies the flexibility is very less why because it is being governed by the board of directors who are the representatives of all the shareholders sources of funding or from where does the money come into the sole proprietorship it is by the owner only in case of partnership the partners bring the money in case of the company the shareholders provide the capital for the company these are the examples of different types of organizations clear hybrid business entities uh, which you can see these days are limited liability partnership and one person company which means limited liability partnership is a hybrid of partnership uh, wherein the liability is limited to the extent of uh, agreement or guarantee given by the partner similarly one person company is again a uh, company which is run by one person right these are as a sort of hybrid forms of entities now looking at the features of this uh, we find that in case of limited liability partner the owner are the partners whereas in case of one person company as the name suggests it would be only a one person number of owners would be two 
in case of the maximum number there is no limit in case of one person company it would be only one person legality now these are separate legal entities governed by the llp act 2008 and in case of one person as it is a company it would be uh, governed by the companies act management control in case of llp is again with the partners whereas in case of one person company it is the board of director liability is limited in both the cases registration is mandatory in both the cases flexibility again in case of partnership the same case it depends upon the agreement entered into by the partners in case of uh, one person company again since it is a board of director the uh, it is lesser the flexibility is lesser source of funds uh, in case of partnership firm the partners bring the funds and in case of uh, this uh, one person company it is the sole proprietor or the individual who brings that these are the examples of different uh, these two forms of hybrid business entities so with this uh, we conclude today's class wherein what we have seen is we have seen the first thing that the accounting as a system of measurement and valuation wherein we have seen that whatever transactions happen we need to identify them we need to measure them in terms of money then there is a valuation concept which says that you need to find out the benefit or every transaction has a benefit and sacrifice aspect and when the uh, transfer among this benefit and sacrifice happens then you find out the value of that right then we have seen what are uh, the different uh, things which goes into measurement what are the different things which goes into the uh, valuation concept then we have seen the types or forms of entities wherein we spoke about the uh, traditional format and then we talked about the modern or hybrid form of entities we have seen what are the features what are the characteristics what are the risks involved in them what are the decision making powers which are given uh, uh, which are available with the different forms of organizations right so this is all about our uh, today's class thank you so much